So we today we discuss 434 in the Bhagavad Gita. The topic will be uh, that about the spiritual master, the Guru. And here we'll be focusing on 434 in the Gita. Tadvidhi pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya upadekshantite gyanam gyanina sattva darshinaha. So, Tadvidhi pranipate na. Krishna is telling to know that truth pranipate na. Go and approach the spiritual master. Tadvidhi pranipate na pariprashne na. So, Krishna is describing Tadvidhi to know that. Pranipata, offer your respects, humble submission, Praniprashtne, ask questions, and Sevaya, render service. Then by this, Upadekshantite, Gyanam, you will be able to gain knowledge. Gyaninas Tattva Darshina, those great souls, Gyaninas, they are seers of the truth and they can help you to also understand the truth. So till now, the Bhagavad Gita's flow. The way it is going is in the fourth chapter, Krishna has been talking about the knowledge that enables us to overcome sensuality and come to spirituality. So, the first cha first chapter talks about Arjuna's confusion. Second chapter talks about Arjuna's uh, Krishna teaching Arjuna his identity, and then acting in accordance with the identity. Then in the third chapter we discussed about how Arjuna understood various levels for functioning. Especially the third chapter concluded with the selfish desires for sensuality that can sabotage our spirituality. And then the knowledge, the fourth chapter is called as uh, Transcendental Knowledge by Srila Prabhupada. It is also called traditionally as Jnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga. So, Gyan, that is the knowledge that enables us to work with renunciation. So, what is that knowledge that prevents entanglement? So, we have discussed various aspects of that knowledge till now. We discussed the principle of revelation in 4, 1 and 2. Then we discussed about the principle of the divine descent for giving this knowledge. Then we talked about how there is one purpose, although there can be many different paths toward that purpose in 4.11. Then the previous session I discussed about the principle of karma, more in terms of responsibly choosing our actions. And then, now in this session, we are going to discuss about the, if we are going to choose wisely, if we are going to act responsibly, kim karma, kim karmeti, that was the verse we discussed last time. That so to understand what is our karma, how do we come to know that? That is with the guidance of the spiritual master. So let's can we go ahead? Next slide. So we will discuss four questions. Do we need a guru? Now, why can't we have a direct relationship with God? Does a guru come between us and God? Then how do we know which guru is right for us? And how do we approach a Guru? So let's begin with the first question. How do, do I need a Guru? So firstly, the word Guru has become very generalized in today's world. Can you go to the next slide? So the Guru refers in today's world to any kind of teacher. So we can have a computer Guru. I can have a music guru somebody can say that i have a i have athletics guru the word guru is used uh, not just for a teacher the guru is also used for in general for an expert so guru as it is used in the bhagavad gita is somewhat different in fact um, the gita uses different words to refer to the spiritually realized people it isn't strict to the word guru alone it uses in this context it uses the word tattva darshinaha because the word see words can have different meanings in different contexts and what is being specifically said can be understood by using different words which point to that concept so the 
concept is a person who is going to guide us in life and that is the word guru is not just a teacher but an exemplar one who lives the truth not just who teaches the truth one who demonstrates to their living what is the truth so in that another word is acharya so here the focus is on the seer arjuna's confusion was caused by seeing he saw the two armies assembled and he felt that uh, i can't fight so tattva darshin ha so arjuna was not seeing the truth he was seeing only the material level of reality so krishna is telling that the gurus are those who are seers of the truth so once there is right seeing then then can be right doing also so the tattva darshin ha is the word used over here in this verse the idea is that the guru sees and then the, uh, the guru acts accordingly and helps us to act accordingly so now what does the exemplar mean the next slide illustrates this that there is knowing there is doing and there is being so knowing is more uh, informational okay i know i know how to drive a car uh, i know i know how say, smoking causes ruins your lungs i know what are the ingredients in cooking this now all this information is important uh, without knowing we can't move forward but knowing alone is not enough knowing is more we take in information from the outer world doing is how we implement it so that is what the skill to do it well so knowing is important but beyond that doing is also important and beyond doing there is also being being means that we focus primarily on uh, embodying that way of living so the uh, the the teaching of the bhagavad gita is that how can we live without being entangled in this world how can we live responsibly without getting entangled and for that purpose the gita teaches various things its most important uh, teaching is that we work with spiritual consciousness not with material consciousness so the guru knows the material and spiritual levels of reality the guru acts spiritually and doesn't just act spiritually occasionally but embodies that so that is the that is the uh, uh, that is what the bhagavad gita is talking about as tattva darshinah once somebody has seen the truth in truth tattva means truth then they will mold themselves accordingly the same word tattva was used earlier in 49 in the bhagavad gita when krishna talks about knowing him in truth janma karma chime divyam evam yo vetti tattvatah so if somebody knows the lord in truth and what happens they become so attracted to him that tattva deham punar janma naiti mame ti so arjuna that they become attracted to him and they never uh, they attain him they don't return to this world so that is uh, that is devotion to the transcendental devotion to the lord becomes the defining integrating driving uh, driving uh, feature virtue core of the uh, spiritual master and they can teach us to do the same thing so now let's move forward now in today's world there is a lot of suspicion about any authority figures in fact the post modern world view is that the we need to uh, we need to <coughs> reject all authorities because all authorities are exploitative they are manipulative they are power hungry and that's why rejecting all authority is what is talked about does the guru come between us and god so the idea over here is that some people feel that in the spiritual domain also what is the need for any authority i can just i i can have a relationship with god i can approach god and why should there be any kind of middleman and while there are many people who are atheistic who explicitly reject god there are many others who are not atheistic but they are suspicious about 
uh, any about those who who those who are uh, about religious people or religious authorities and there is of course reason for such suspicion we have unfortunately like in every any area of life ultimately it is uh, human nature uh, that is prone to vice and there are religious authorities who also sometimes behave in less than exemplary ways sometimes in regrettably wrong ways so then because of that suspicion is understandable so some people feel why have this middleman just let me remove uh, i i'll just approach god directly or if somebody is not that theist that directly theistic they say i want i want to be spiritual i'll be spiritual myself why do i need someone and that person comes between me and god actually can we go to the next slide the guru doesn't come between us and god rather there is already a lot that is there between us and god now between us and god there is a big wall that wall is two things broadly speaking impurities and misconceptions now, within our mind there are many many impure desires within our intelligence there are many uh, wrong conceptions or less than right conceptions and these act as a block they prevent us from perceiving or connecting with the divine so what the spiritual master does is go ahead please that spiritual master actually helps us to remove what comes between us and god the spiritual master doesn't come between us and god rather what is already there between us and god the spiritual master helps us to remove that ultimately yes we all have a personal relationship with the divine and that personal relationship with krishna is something which we all can relish and the spiritual master doesn't block doesn't monopolize doesn't uh, remove uh, doesn't restrict or remove access to god rather the very things that restrict and remove access to god for us those things are removed by the guidance of the spiritual master so why do we need a spiritual master at one level we need a teacher in any walk of life even for something uh, uh, even those who say that don't accept any authority what are they doing they may say don't accept any authority but then they are asking us to accept their authority when they are telling such a thing so that we have to accept on their authority that all authority should be rejected and does uh, uh, this postmodern uh, re rejection of all authority collapses as a self contradictory assertion we do follow some authority or the other always now if we understand clearly what we are doing when we are following a spiritual master that is the spiritual master is meant to help us perceive life's deeper realities perceive uh, perceive krishna and ultimately receive krishna re realize krishna in our own hearts relish krishna's presence in our hearts so then we see the guidance of the spiritual master in those terms how that guidance helps us to remove our various impurities and misconceptions within us and the tattva darshinaha if you see the spiritual master is seeing the truth and enabling us to see the truth it is not that the spiritual master says i am the truth is not that in that way they come in the way rather they help us to remove what is in the way and one those who reject all authority what happens to them that one who those who think that they will be their own guru soon have fools as their disciples he who thinks that he will be his own guru has a fool as his disciple why because we if we think i'll be my own guru then i end up staying in illusion staying under the control of the impurity the misconception that i have and as both the guru and the disciple end up staying as fools so now that brings us to the next question how do we know uh, how can we find a guru so here it's a very important principle to understand that ultimately it is it is the lord who is the spiritual master for all of us krishnam vande jagadguru 
that he it is he who manifests through various mediums it is god is present in our hearts a god is pre- god when he rules the hearts of others then through them he can guide us and even if they are not completely devoted but the lord is uh, can use various instruments to guide us toward him so so if we understand that whenever we are say putting faith in a spiritual master we are not just putting faith in that person we are putting faith in krishna and krishna is recommending that we follow a guru so we follow the spiritual master as an expression of our faith in krishna and then gradually the spiritual master deepens our faith in krishna and our faith in the spiritual master deepens by that practice of bhakti and thus it goes on forward so god is high up in the spiritual world we are here in the material world now it's very difficult for us to access god directly now when we can't access god directly then what happens then we need to access god indirectly indirectly means through his spiritual masters so when we access god through 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 not through his, through his representatives the spiritual master so the spiritual master is the way we could say god extending his grace downward to reach out to us and to help us rise so that is the underlying principle of the of the spiritual master now moving on so that the guru is both one and many one and many means the the krishna uses the word gyaninas tattva darshinah the word gyaninas is plural it is not singular and often the word gurun is used in many prayers one day hum shri guru shri one day shri gurun shri utakmagar kamalam shri shri gurun vaishnavamscha so gurun is plural so guru is not one guru is multiple so there is one in principle and many in manifestations the idea is that whoever is connected with krishna and helps us connected with krishna that is our guru that is our spiritual master and when we approach the spiritual master in this integrated sense then we understand that there the person is important but ultimately krishna is also most important we are connecting with krishna through the spiritual master now what is the reason for this uh, tattva darshinah multiple spiritual masters the idea is that krishna is the one who is guiding us through various channels and of course we we can we need to have one channel as a primary channel at the same time the primary channel is not the exclusive channel it's a uh, we talked earlier about parampara or tradition so let's uh, uh, see this in that light can we go to the next slide here the idea is that when we are working there is guru sadhu and shastra there is a the just like a stool can have three feet on which it stands balanced so similarly the st- st- structure of spiritual the system for sharing spiritual knowledge is like a tripod where there is a spiritual master there are the saintly teachers sadhus sadhu the word sadhu literally means uh, sat sat is the truth sadhu is sat is the truth or the good or the real and sadhu is those the, those who have dedicated their lives to pursuing the truth that which is true that which is good that which is real so the saintly people and shastra of course is scripture which gives us knowledge of ultimate reality so guru sadhu and shastra these three work together and guru is one who teaches shastra primarily to us so there are different kinds of gurus within the gaudiya tradition we talk about shiksha diksha guru shiksha guru and path pradarshak guru so Uh, so the path pra- diksha guru is one who gives us the mantra and the right of initiation happens over there the shiksha gurus are those who give us instructions 
the path pradarshan guru are those who show us the way now beyond the specific technicalities of the nomenclature the important thing is to understand the principle the principle is that there is god who is guiding us and earlier i talked about how people today are suspicious about following an author any authority or if not suspicious and at least hesitant so about submitting to any authority and it is important to be cautious and within the tradition itself there is an awareness there is that self critical awareness that wherever there is uh, wherever there is a role of guidance there is also the possibility for misguidance and there is the check and balance system through guru sadhu and shastra so if we focus only on the guru and then it becomes a personality cult where it where now there can be some teachers who may themselves be very charismatic they may themselves be also spiritually advanced but when everything is centered on one personality the problem with that is it is not sustainable it is not uh, what if that personality who that person whoever is it everybody has a everybody is mortal in the sense that they live for a finite number of years so what happens after them often any group that is started by a, charism a charismatic founder unless there is some system to transmit uh, that charisma or that authority to subsequent generations the move, the organization collapses after that so person when a guru is made into almost just yeah, the guru is made into god for all practical purposes then it can very easily become a personality cult so the guru represents god the sadhus represent god the shastra represents god and that is how we all can move toward krishna through all these channels so to understand this let's consider example of say a university now in a university if somebody decides to do their phd in say particle physics then they need to get admission into the university so there is the the, the principal or the head of the head of the department or the dean of the university whoever who sanctions who who stamps who authorizes who grants entry and with and that is important so so now after that the phd candidate might sometimes work directly with that particular uh, admitting authority uh, or the phd guide might be someone different the peer and the student might work a lot with that phd guide so then they will learn a lot more from that particular phd guide so if a student wants to get phd so the path pradarshak guru is the person who tells him you know this is a good university you can go and learn over there so that is showing the path path pradarshak the diksha guru is like the admitting authority the one who through whom entry is got and then there are the diksha gurus the sorry the shiksha gurus are those who help to help to who actually teach the student and what is taught there are textbooks so the now what the guru sadhu and shastra all of these there should there has to be a harmony among these three and all three teach together teach harmoniously and that is how this system of knowledge moves forward and while uh, we often when we talk about guru we use it in the singular to refer to the one spiritual master but the, if we look at the scripture itself uh, the, the there is a far greater emphasis on the process of learning by going to various spiritual teachers and learning from them we see when ram was in the exile or when uh, the pandavas were in, ex in in exile they were learning from many many teachers and the idea is that they would meet saintly people say to discuss and we have the history of an asking questions sometimes difficult questions he asks and the saintly people give answers and it's not that everybody is parroting the same answer 
uh, if we look at in the in the mahabharata itself what markandeya rishi says or what uh, vyasa says it is similar in essence but there is different emphasis there is different mood and the idea is that we all need all the inspiration that we can get to move forward in the spiritual journey we need wisdom we need inspiration uh, uh, so from wherever we get it we take it and we and if it is helping us move closer to krishna we understand that this is this is helping this is uh, Uh, this is the spiritual knowledge just like a student is in a university the purpose of the university is to learn the knowledge now in bhakti it's not just intellectual learning it is transformational learning it is not just knowing or doing it is being so the personal connection with the spiritual master is is also extremely important so when i give the example of a university it is at one level to contextualize the the connection of the spiritual master in terms of the purpose of that connection the purpose is to help us grow in spiritual knowledge at the same time we can go to another example no example exhaustively covers any spiritual truth spiritual truths are themselves uh, sometimes uh, are, are themselves transcendental and every metaphor that we use is meant to help us develop a understanding of that which is beyond all metaphors so it's the standard meta- standard example for standard metaphor for illustrating the role of metaphors is what is called a shakha chandra nyay shakha chandra is shakha is branches chandra is moon so a child who is often habituated to looking around the mother wants to show that child the moon suddenly the child it's not very habitual for the child to look up so the mother says do you see the tree yeah now do you see the trunk going up or do you see that branch going left almost horizontal yes now do you see another branch going slightly vertically up yeah now what do you see in between those two branches oh okay Uh, i see a shining object yeah that's the moon that's the moon oh okay so what happens is that metaf- uh, so the moon is not between the branches but by pointing to the two branches the moon can be indicated so similarly various metaphors help us to understand the the spiritual truths which actually exist often beyond all metaphors so one metaphor where the focus is on education it's a university metaphor now we could go to another metaphor and that is the understanding that when we are trying to connect with the with the lord that connection is not like a mechanical connection it is not that we take a we take a say a screw and put it fit it into a particular socket it is more of a personal connection it is a investment of our emotions it is a redirection of our heart it is ultimately a matter of love and we learn to love krishna by associating with those who love krishna we have not talked elaborately about bhakti till now and the principle of loving the lord in this course and we'll come to that especially in the ninth chapter from the 6th chapter we'll start discussing that subject elaborately uh, but at this stage we need to develop an attraction for the spiritual or develop a connection with the spiritual where there are there is pure spiritual in- emotion invested in that connection and for that connection to be developed it is important for each one of us to uh, to have an ex- uh, to have a means by which that redirection of inf- inf- of emotions happens and we love krishna by loving those who love krishna so quite often it is that it's gradually a step by step process so it's not it's not very easy to suddenly love the lord it is that gra- we love those who who love the lord and gradually by that we develop love for him our spiritual journey is not like a sudden helicopter zoom 
we just rise up it's more like a airplane which gradually takes off so we need to learn to love the those who are devoted to god who are accessible to us in the world around us and that gives momentum 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 and then as the momentum comes up then we start uh, then the plane takes off so similarly loving krishna is something which happens gradually as we move forward in our spiritual journey by loving those who love him and among those who love krishna the spiritual master is the one who who inspires us to love krishna the most and who loves krishna deeply also prasangam ajaram pasham atmana kavayo viduhu sa eva sadhu shukruto moksha dwaram apavritam in the bhagavatam it is said that we are all bound in this world prasangam we are bound by attachments and ajaram pasham ajara is that this is a attachment that never gets old jara is age so our body is bodies grow old but our attachments don't grow old they still have the same strength and vigor strength and, uh, and irresistible grip on us as they had when we were younger also so atman hak kavayo vidu they are very difficult to give it that's why that's what wise people know but if we can direct that affection sa eva sadhu shukruto moksha dwaram apavritam if we direct that same attachment towards the divine to towards those who are devoted to the lord to sadhu the saintly people to the spiritual master and to the saintly people then moksha dwaram apavritam that very attachment which binds us can also help us move toward liberation toward spiritual understanding and toward spiritual liberation ultimately so the so so one is that we develop a very personal one to one connection with the spiritual master and that kindle that inspires us to love the lord so in this now now knowing we talked about knowing doing and being earlier so the spiritual master gives us knowledge and then by that knowledge we start practicing bhakti and by that practicing bhakti we become permeated with love for krishna so the this is what this knowing being doing all this needs to happen and the spiritual master is the primary engine who, who initiates the various processes the processes of gaining knowledge the process of living according to that knowledge the process of becoming permeated with love for god the, all that is the spiritual spiritual master can be the engine for us to do all that so this is the uh, idea that we all need a spiritual master but we don't just need a spiritual master we need a proper understanding of what the spiritual master is and what the spiritual master does so can you go ahead now if we consider when we are what is the proper understanding for approaching the spiritual master the proper understanding is that uh, when we are choosing how do i know which who is the right guru well don't worry so much about whether the guru is genuine work on making yourself genuine what do we mean by making ourselves genuine it means that we focus on trying to make sure that we ourselves are seriously sincerely seeking spiritual knowledge ultimately krishna is in our heart and he will guide us so if we focus too much on oh is my spiritual master is this should i follow this authority or that authority that authority then we might stay perpetually in doubt and doubt can paralyze us earlier we discussed about how in any journey if you are driving say the driving requires a accelerator and a brake so in the journey of life in the journey of developing a relationship faith is the accelerator and the and doubt is the brake and both of them are required as accelerator and brake gas and brake both are required similarly faith and doubt both are required but what is most important is required is that we should want to drive we should want to get to the destination 
once we want to get to the destination we we will know okay now i should press the brake now i should press the uh, press the accelerator so work on making yourself genuine means do we do i really want to know the ultimate reality do i want to uh, do i want to love god so once we once we focus on that often the ex- that oh but i i this whole religion business is very confusing soul spirituality business there are so many different people with so many different opinions how do i know now who is right yeah it's a genuine concern but it's not that that concern should paralyze us forever just like when we are sick now something as common as common cold there can be very diff- the, uh, within allopathy itself there can be many different uh, treatments for it and beyond allopathy there is naturopathy there is ayurveda there is homeopathy and they they all have their own treatments also so now which treatment should i follow it's not that when we want to take a treatment we let ourselves wait till we have done a exhaustive study of the, all the various treatment options available we do a working study as much okay this is the treatment that is required how much uh, commitment does it require can i do it let me see try it out so if we really want to be cured we don't wait till we have studied all the possible medications before we adopt a cure no we just start off and gradually we learn how best to move forward and similarly for us when we are striving to grow spiritually it's important that we don't we don't wait forever to go on the spiritual path it's important that we move forward gradually but not that we wait forever just like we do take due caution before taking a treatment but we do, it's not that we wait forever so work on making yourself genuine means am i do I, am i really serious about growing spiritually if i am then it is krishna who will guide me can you go ahead so quite of another but pitfall that comes over here is one is that we don't seek a guru at all because how will i know who is the right guru another way we can have a shortcut is that i just i just look for a guru who tells me oh you are doing the right thing you are a good person then we just want to do something and the guru guru ratifies what we are doing so then the guru almost become like a fashion choice in certain spiritual circles it might be trendy to have a guru so people often treat the guru in that sense that you know if somebody comes to my house i show them okay this is my sofa this is my television this is my dog and this is my guru so the guru is expected to just uh, sit and uh, sit in a sweet uh, sweet peace serene pose and smile and speak soothing words and make me feel good about myself well that is not what a guru is meant to do uh, we need a guru to show us the way not to sanction our way so to work on ourselves becoming sincere means we avoid both these extremes one extreme that uh, i will because i can't know who is a genuine guru so i will not explore this at all or i'll just follow whoever makes me feel good about myself and my life yes we want not that feeling good is bad but feeling good is not the sole parameter we have to not just feel good but become good we have to purify ourselves we discussed earlier how spirituality is not just a state of mind it is a level of reality and we need to attain that level of reality by growing by transforming ourselves so to find a guru we ourselves need to be genuine and then after that see basically we start from where we are in our lives there are certain things which we know we should do there are certain things which we know we should not do and there are maybe many things which we are not sure whether we should do or not do so if we sh- we start doing well what we know we should be doing and we st- try to stop doing those things which we know we should not be doing then by that action itself we are showing that we want to be guided there is a manifestation of god within us that is our conscience 
and we will talk about conscience elaborately in a future session but broadly with the knowledge that we have of what is right and what is wrong we start moving forward doing as much right as we can avoiding as much as wrong as we can and if we do that we show that we want to be guided can you go to the next slide if we show that we want to be guided then we will be guided externally and internally so externally means that we will be guided to a place where we can find a spiritual master uh, internally means when we are approaching someone when we are uh, connecting with someone at that time we will get the guidance to understand is this is this the right thing for me should i move forward in this direction and that way we can move ahead in our lives and that's why rather than that's why this is again the theme of don't worry about whether my spiritual master is genuine work on making yourself genuine and one way to make ourselves genuine is to start doing what we know we should be doing and start avoiding what we know we should be avoiding so to the extent we 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 take guidance to that extent we will be given more guidance and then uh, how do we approach a spiritual master can we go ahead so this is a concluding part of this class so tad krishna says that as i said the spiritual master is krishna is up here the spiritual master is here and krishna's grace comes to us through the spiritual master so how do we access his grace there's three principles krishna talks about over here tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya so paripata is humility we hum with with humble submissiveness not that we think that i know everything and i am here to test my spiritual test this person's knowledge yes there there certainly we have to use our intelligence to understand how much they know and that brings us to the next part that is inquisitiveness we should inquisitiveness means we are we are eager to learn and we also use our intelligence to ask questions and then there is service service mindedness is that actually uh service mindedness is basically the idea that each uh, some each of us we have to as i talked about knowing doing and being so spirituality is not just a means or mode of knowing we have to do some seva some contri- some contribution and that enables uh, the knowledge to become realization so when we approach a spiritual master with humility with the desire to know and with a service attitude then we will be r- propelled forward in our spiritual mar journey by that divine guidance so i'll summarize i spoke today on the topic of the spiritual master we started by discussing five broad things uh, we discussed uh, five, uh, five broad things one was do we need a guru guru is not just uh, a specialist in a particular field or a teacher guru is a exemplar not just knowing but all, not just doing also but knowing doing and being so guru lives spiritually and enables all of us to live spiritually then i discussed about how the spiritual master uh, how do we approach a spiritual master uh, in the sense of that is the whole class we first of all understand what is a spiritual master the spiritual master is uh, both one and many it is krishna who is our ultimate guide and he manifests in various ways to give us guidance and the guru is one and many one means there is one person with whom we connect but at the same time there are many people through whom we connect also and both of these go together one and many and then after that i discussed about how best we can move forward in our spiritual journey by understanding that when we go to a spiritual master we avoid the two extremes of of sin extreme of doubt of cynicism and sentimentalism cynicism is that oh i don't accept any authority why do i need someone between me and god the guru doesn't come between us and god the guru removes the impurity and misconceptions that are between us and god and sentimentalism is that oh anyone who makes me feel good about myself that is my guru no there is there is we purpose the purpose is we want to gain spiritual knowledge and grow spiritually and sometimes that hair makes us feel good sometimes it may not make us feel that good but we persevere and for such perseverance there is a system of guru sadhu shastra which is a internal check balance system 
and we approach the spiritual master by hum humility inquisitiveness and service mindedness when we approach in this way focusing not on whether the guru is genuine or not but for whether we are genuine then we will find that krishna will guide us forward in our spiritual journey to ultimately attain him thank you very much so there are a few questions which we can discuss now so in our tradition guru is emphasized in other traditions guru is not emphasized when we follow a particular path we need to follow that path wholeheartedly i talked earlier about the climbing up a mountain there can be different paths up the mountain and uh, whichever path we are following there are particular requirements for that path so some path might be very slippery we need a particular kind of shoes that grip the soil some path might be very wet we need a crop appropriate gear for that so each path will have its own specifics and if we are going to follow a path if you want to go up a mountain in a particular way by a particular path we have to have the necessary gear and do the necessary what is required so the specific idea of a spiritual master may not be there in other traditions but there is the principle that we need guidance and we may not have the principle of initiation but there is there is there is there is some kind of baptism there is some kind of ritualization of the process of entering into the tradition so enter into, into that system or, or starting on that path so the specifics can vary the de facto the guru plays various roles and in various traditions the pastor or the the whoever the spiritual authority they may also play various roles so it's a now specifically the emphasis may or may not be there but the but the role is there at all and whichever path we are following we need to follow what is given in that path so now can we develop love for god without having a guru love bhakti is vishwanath thakur says repeatedly and our acharya say that bhakti is independent bhakti does not depend on a ritual uh, to be followed at the same time bhakti requires the association of other bhaktas bhakti sanjayate bhakti so if somebody who is genuine about developing love for god they will associate with others who are on that journey who may be much more advanced on that journey than they are and they take inspiration guidance so whether the relationship is formally uh, called as a guru disciple relationship or not uh, that is not as important as the, the nomenclature is not as important as the as the principle the principle is to develop love for god is what is what is the spiritual journey's purpose and for doing that we need to associate with and take inspiration guidance from others who are developing love for god <clears throat> so moving forward now what are the questions here does surrender does love towards a spiritual master come first then we surrender or do we surrender and then we develop love this is like the whole chicken and egg question what comes first if we are starting we we are of course vegetarian so we don't have chicken and egg farm but if we are starting a chicken farm you now we'll start with whatever we have if i have a egg i start with egg if i have a chicken i start with the chicken so wherever we are we have to start from there we hear from the spiritual we hear from various spiritual teachers we see who inspires us and we develop that connection that connection may inspire us to surrender first that connection may inspire us with devotion first whichever works now rather than worrying too much about what comes first we start with whatever we have we start with whatever we have and if we keep if we keep moving forward in our spiritual journey krishna will keep providing us whatever we need
so we need in in our in a moment like scon we learn from various sources there are courses there are various teachers there are books so do we need a spiritual master mm. uh, what does a, a spiritual master bring that is not there through available through books and various teachers guru sadhu shastra is a tripod and every one of them is required i talk talk only of, if you just have guru and not to sadhu shastra that becomes a personality cult this itself is a whole class of you know if you remove only if you remove one of them or obsess over only one of them how we may go wrong so there is within the tradition a formal process of initiation now how important that a formal process is in the personal in the lived experience of a devotee that will vary from situation to situation but just like when you want to get into university there is a formal process of admission can someone uh, gain can can somebody become a physics genius without being admitted into university without being admitted to any university well in exceptional cases somebody might just read read books and learn a lot but it's not just about reading books about the, about uh, doing experiments about entering into the community of people who are into physics and spiritual knowledge is not just like academic knowledge or experimental knowledge about objects which are distinct from us it is experiential we want to experiment on our own consciousness within us and transform ourselves so we need entry so initiation is the process of formalization of entry and initiation is given by one spiritual master so now as i said in how much in the lived experience of a devotee the spiritual master contributes that can vary from situation to situation in the past there were two kinds of spiritual masters broadly many but broadly two one were the mendicants the renunciates who would travel and they would come to a particular place maybe once and their spirituality would inspire people and they would get initiated so we have the example of advaita acharya who was initiated by madhavendra puri but from all accounts that we have advaita acharya met madhavendra puri only once when he passed by through shantipur and he got he took initiation from him but after that it was he was within the community of uh, devotees in the, and he in fact formed a community over there and he continued his spiritual life so sometimes the renuncia the sometimes the spiritual masters might be traveling teachers and at that time there was no no internet no airplane so there was no advance intimation also i they would just travel spont often spontaneously so it's sometimes a, a disciple might not meet his spiritual master ever ever again <clears throat> and sometimes it may happen so that but still they, they would take initiation and then in the local community there they would be spiritually nourished and they would go onwards sometimes uh, the uh, other kind of spiritual masters were those who were locally based priests so there might be a temple over there might be priests in the temple and they would give initiation and they would perform the priest the lok the lok priest duties also they would perform the marriages they would perform the name giving ceremony of the children now is the priestly duty also the duty of the spiritual master well maybe maybe not <clears throat> the important thing is that there was a whole community and within that community uh, depending on individual nature and inspiration people would take initiation either from a local priest or from a traveling teacher and now when shri prabhupad started the krishna consciousness movement at that time in many ways he started because he started in america where the culture was very very different from what was traditionally there in india prabhupad's first disciples were culturally linguistically intellectually educationally uh, theologically they were radically different from what was the traditional uh, situation and in that sense prabhupad had to uh, emphasize prabhupad was practically the soul guide although he emphasized shastra and he connected him he also wanted his god brothers to also be connected 
you would invite them but somehow they didn't come but the point is prabhupad himself became the guiding authority in a significant way because that was contextually what was required so because of that uh, the position of the spiritual master is sometimes emphasized a lot contextually if we consider the position of the spiritual master has been over emphasized in our tradition now that doesn't mean that the spiritual master position is not important at all it just means that we have to see the context so depending on one's individual spiritual master one's nature one spiritual master's nature uh, and whether is a locally based teacher or a traveling teacher and who we feel inspired by most thus in the lived experience how much difference a spiritual master makes will vary but that is a part of the tradition and we need initiation so beyond that things can vary so how can we develop a spiritual con a connection with the spiritual master when the spiritual master is not that easily available well there are four things one is the personal association of the spiritual master the second is the instruction of the spiritual master that is the hearing the classes the third is the association created by the spiritual master that means the god family specifically and the fourth is the mission of the spiritual master every spiritual teacher will be uh, often has a particular mood of how to serve the uh, serve and we need to look at all these four things uh the personal association the created the instruction the created association in the mission and whichever works whichever we feel aligned by inspired by we align with that, that more and more and by that the connection will happen the connection doesn't have to happen necessarily by personal association if we are sharing a mission then uh if if we feel inspired by that same mission then we will be moving forward in our lives so how do we find a, a guru a bona fide guru well the pr principle here is that if you want to love krishna somebody who is loving krishna should be the person who we are seeking guidance from and the primary characteristic i, I have talked about this earlier that the bottom top of the mountain is the bottom of the mountain so the top of the mountain is spiritual consciousness the bottom of the mountain is material consciousness so a genuine guru is one who is focused on uh, who is spiritually connected who is spiritually atta attached who is spiritually devoted and who is not materially obsessed not materially attached so spiritual attachment and material detachment are the defining characteristics of a spiritual master so if you keep the metaphor in mind of the going up the mountain then that can help us to find a spiritual master so guru sadhu shastra the guru spiritual master uh, needs to be well versed in scripture not just knows the path up the mountain scripture gives us the path up the mountain you know? not only should they know the path up the mountain but they should also know uh, they should also have gone up the mountain so that they can guide us to go up the mountain and uh, two more questions i'll take then we'll quickly stop after that so one is so the books of shri prabhupad and the gita daily articles are these coming from the guru uh, can we see these as teachings of uh, teachings from guru yes there are different kinds of gurus prabhupad is the prom prominent uh, is the founder acharya and is the prominent teacher is the prominent representative of krishna for us and then krishna can have many other representatives based on that particular representative uh so we have uh, to the extent any particular message helps us move closer to krishna we can see that as coming from the guru as a teaching of the guru and uh last question we will I'll discuss one more that do we need to do we does the guru spiritual master need to <laughs> uh being a per, how do we choose a bona fide sampradaya before selecting the guru i talked in the previous session about sampradaya so i don't want to repeat that too much 
So there are technicalities and sometimes if we get caught in technicalities, we will miss out on the purpose. The principle is we want to go up the mountain, develop love for God. And we have to use our God-given intelligence to see if a spiritual message makes sense. And once that spiritual message makes sense, then we start living it and see whether it transforms us. So intelligence and experience are the basis by which we can make a, uh, make a choice and we commit ourselves to a path. So there have been, if you want to go up a mountain, there might be certain predestined, uh, uh, pre, uh, predetermined paths which have been tread by many people in the past. And we tread that, then it's easier to go. So we could say the four sampr. Uh, so within a particular path of the mountain, we can say the four sampradayas are like prominent. Uh, the sampradayas are like lanes which have been taken by people in the past, and that enables us to move forward. So we focus on the principle for selecting any particular path or a particular lane within a path, if you want to say further. But it is the Principle, we have to focus on the principle. We should be growing spiritually. Our spiritual attachment should be increasing. Our material detachment should be material attachment should be decreasing. If that is happening, then we are moving onward in our spiritual journey. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any more questions we'll discuss in a future session. Hare Krishna.